Marco Chok, uh, because I'm focusing on uh, different philosophical issues. But what uh, made me uh, to what made me be attentive to this subject, of course, the current situation, and uh, in Ukraine and uh, in the world, and just. I found some sources, some resources of Ukrainian identity, of this unexpected um, turn in, uh, you know, these events, because nobody and even Ukrainians didn't believe in their strengths and in possibility of the war. And so now we are discovering a lot of things in ourselves. And this self-reflection is very, very important for any culture. And especially uh, in those hard uh, time uh, period of, uh, you know, culture's destiny. And uh, Marco Volchok's uh, uh, is uh, a writer who, of course, is very popular, well known in Ukraine, but not so, you know, important from philosophical point of view, especially uh, from the um, contemporary uh, reflections on different subjects. But as it turned out, it's a very deep and profound uh, uh, text in terms of understand, on the one hand, the human being, the female being, and particularly um, the human body as the tool of struggle for the freedom, what our country is doing, because if the key question of uh, uh, our situation, why we are so, you know, desperately uh, defending our freedom. And just, of course, the, in uh, that context, decolonization of Ukrainian culture is the process of restoration of its authentic context. Overcoming the imperial and Soviet interpretation of the later reveals the coherence of the ideas and values of Ukrainian culture with the Euro European tradition. The value of individual freedom is one of these. Marko Wovchok's narrations tell how the female body becomes a weapon in the struggle for individual freedom. So her female characters could not be considered as the active fighters, could be considered as the active fighters, not as victims of serfdom oppression in Russian empire. The controversy of individual tragic experience serves to resolve the social dilemma between slavery serfdom in this case and values of free life. And just, sorry. As I mentioned this, uh, just a couple words about the uh, cultural and social background of uh, Marko Lovchok's text. Uh, the historical background of the story events in, in her works is made introduction of serfdom by Russian Empire on the Ukrainian Cossack lands with their long democratic tradition. The Russian system of serfdom, which was established in most Ukrainian territories under Russian rule at the end of the 18th century, was based on the principle that master owned the peasant under total control. Masters could dispose of their serfs as they wished. They could separate from their land, family, loved ones, everything. But the key idea of Marco Lovchuk's narration is about lost garden, not suffering as it is in the um, colonial and uh, Soviet interpretations of her works. 
not Sodom and Seferin. Malkov of Chok's female characters are alone in forgetting their garden bed. Since they had been experienced to be free, what was meant mm -hmm. to them to be happy. The description of the young girl most often uh, indicates some uh, her gaiety, cheerfulness, which harmonizes with the description of nature. She physically and spiritually healthy, full of life, harmonious in herself. Each um, uh, one consciously seeks to marry a loved one, have a household, take care of children. It can be seen as the desire of any average woman who wishes to arrange a life for her uh, and every unsuccessful attempt makes her hum humiliated and uh, dissatisfied. The heroines of Marco Lovchok's uh, most longed for life and family habits carry his feeling through life's collisions. However, facing a certain crisis, they unconsciously choose self-denial. In the cases of Marco Lovchok's female characters, they are undergoing losing their gardens as a symbol of happy and free life. That's why maybe for Ukrainians now also uh, the metaphor of lost garden is very important because we know what it's real life and that's why we don't know to lose it. And uh, that's why it's important to make clear what freedom is. Freedom is a fundamental characteristic of human being. It is also the basic characteristic of the human body as well. A basic characteristic of national identity as turned out and we see this. And also the basic characteristic of human female identity in Marco Wojciech's narration. But freedom of uh, the human body is a condition for personal freedom. The Russian invasion of Ukraine is the war uh, on Ukrainian women as well. Women in Ukraine represent peace and sovereignty. On the most famous Ukrainian memorial, it's depicted here in Kyiv, it's female character. It's independence monument in Maidan Nezalezhnosti that symbolizes Ukrainian national identity and European aspiration. A large-scale conventional invasion of uh, Russia um, in Ukraine severely affected women by killing, sexual violence, torture. You know about this, unfortunately for you, from news. But Ukrainian women are not just the victim of war. The brave resistance of Ukraine, Ukraine is set by their courage as well. Ukrainian women are present uh, on their all frontiers in the struggle for freedom of Ukraine. Uh, Mikhail Dragomanov, uh, he's uh, uh, a famous uh, Ukrainian thinker, put that history moves toward only when the Institute of Freedom moves toward. The later is criterion for improvement of society. And this step, what was made uh, by Marco of Chor, is also a step toward the freedom. freedom. My key thesis is that freedom is the basic characteristic of the human body. Freedom makes a human body different from such animated body as robot and animals. Uh, the human body is constantly, why it is constantly a changing <laughs> and uh, what makes uh, the human body ontologically uncertain and culturally inconsistent. By nature, the human body is hybrid identity. The human body is the body because it is free to determine how it overcomes its, its incompleteness and finds its historical completeness. The human body is not an object of transformation, 
but the subject of its own changes as it is in Markov of Chirov's uh, narration with female body. The corporeal uncertainty as a fundamental attribute of the human body exposes it to the chaos, destruction, and decay, but on the other hand, enables a body to transform into the body according to the horizon of self-fulfillment, that is to acquire just what it's mean to have having and having is not a relation between you and your intellectual powers or between you and your corporeal feature you are we are having being and having beings uh, uh, are endowed with the rational power on the one hand and uh, somatic on the other to have to have body is to possess a variety of somatic characteristics. Hence, a distinction is drawn between the body one is and the body one has. The distinction uh, fixed uh, by the asymmetry thesis. The latter implies their ownership of own body is intrinsically different from ownership of other objects. Self-ownership possesses a special fact incentive status as a fundamental right. The right of self-ownership is based on the more fundamental notion of respect for a person or her freedom as the condition for gaining happiness. A person is referring to entire biological organism with a certain set of mental corporeal characteristics. The female characters um, of Markov-Chalk narration could be interpreted correctly on the method methodology mentioned above, while the outdated stereotypes of their interpretation distorts the meaning of the female body in the, in the discourse of repressed female corporeality in Ukrainian history. Markov of Chok, a female writer of 19th century, describes the ways of the female bodily self-ownership in the oppression of Ukraine. She was one of the first to convey the psychological conflicts of Ukrainian women of that time, mainly serfs, orphans, poor women, and, and free Cossacks as well, as they told. The interpretations of Mark Wolchuk's anti serfdom works is depicting only the uh, is not uh, depicting only the suffering of women, but their struggle for the freedom. Just I would like to mention that not only Markov of Chok is so unique for Ukrainian culture. We have a lot of uh, female writers like uh, Natalia Kobylianska, Lena Pchilka, uh, uh, Natalia Kabrinska, sorry, Olga Kobylianska, Alessia Ukrainska, and others. According, uh, and they put a lot of, you know, female question. Uh, into the uh, Ukrainian literature. That's why uh, why we have such uh, you know firm um, and strong tradition for feminist uh, uh, way of thinking. Because a lot of uh, at the beginning, at the turn of the uh, last century, uh, female organizations were established on the Ukrainian. Uh, lands because it was not Ukrainian as the country of course. Uh, according to Markov of Chok um, approach, there is only uh, one way to reach freedom for women. It is by self-ownership of the body. Renunciation of the oppressed body through madness, urethite, illness, nonhood, uh, celibacy, as the chance to gain a negative freedom, as the freedom for external constraints. It's from uh, Isar Berlin. 
For the heroines of Marco Bovchov uh, works, freedom is stronger than other person. They understand that uh, they understand that without freedom, nothing connects them with the real world, and therefore their presence in the world uh, waits less for them than the power of resistance to circumstances. They deliberately abstract themselves from the social roles, choosing their own freedom as the only way to escape from reality. It can be a temporary illness as the mean of destroying the cyclical behavior of the days of life, a period of certain preparation when the girls gradu gradually refuses to participate in their everyday life. Gradually, they become aware of their new needs. Mostly, she is looking there, looking for freedom from suffering. The women's deviant behavior demonstrates awareness of one's otherness at the worldview and value dimension of Ukrainian humanity. For example, in uh, the story Harpina, the madness of young mother who lost her child due to the cruel master. The passages reads, I don't know, I have time for passages reading or yes. Yes. Just as example, she was seriously ill. And I would say that uh, this is very free uh, translation. Uh, there is translation in English, but uh, unfortunately I was not able to get it. That's why I put Ukrainian version just to have the original text. Uh, she was seriously ill for three weeks. Somehow the Lord had her mercy and restored it, Lord the God, and, uh, and restored it health, but the mind didn't return. She became like that, somehow out of her mind. A whole day, she walks silently and picks garden puppies and asks, uh, you ask why? And, the, and, the, and this, she says, this is for my baby. Uh, you go over the mountains and see she is sitting between the flowers in the white shirt, well dressed, wearing a necklace, and she is still young, on the whitest truck. She sits and rolls purpose flowers and smiles like a child. It's very, very touching story. I would recommend you <laughs> to read it. Oh, Adarka Akosa. Is the death. It's madness and the death. This as their uh, renunciation and uh, struggle against the reality. It's very important. And in the normal institute, uh, institute it's your uh, Just also as a mean to gain freedom and not to be. Uh, embedded in these circumstances of unfreedom because you know all these characters uh, went from this Cossack background and that's why they are longing for this freedom so desperately and just a passage from uh, their um, this uh, novel Katra is not wanted to live in the world such world of course something happened to her after that insult, ran through the groves and swamps looking for her child, and then somehow the poor girl drowned. And uh, the last one, these three destinies, is the nunhood that depicts three destinies of female and the nunhood, how it is presented. And nunhood is presented rather as a triumph uh, over the world that drawn her. Katria arises above it, designated all its values as negligible and unworthy. And what is interesting that in this novel, Institutka, there is the male character of Moscovite, Moscow, as we call it in Ukraine, who represents a justification for unfreedom. Uh, I just uh, put it in 
push uh, through lines, not because the little blue was complicated, but it, it, it expressed the essence uh, of this uh, uh, image. Today is beaten, and uh, he will add, who can do anything else? That's what serves is for. And he's happy. He is not uh, uh, longing uh, for freedom because he's satisfied with this series. It's Moscovite, it's a special, you know, group. It's not only ethically Russian, but just who came through this manipulation of uh, being subjugated, not to be free. Some conclusion could be made from uh, this, maybe a, maybe a little bit uh, not very um, in general, uh, you know, uh, presented properly because it requires uh, a lot of attention and uh, further uh, researching. But anyway, very important conclusion could be derived. Self-renunciation of oppressed body does not make female character, uh, characters victims. It, we, I am talking about the characters. Negative freedom constitute existential ground for positive freedom as a freedom from internal constraints that it's meant to be self-fulfilled even at the cost of own life or happiness. Bodily renunciation of female characters takes place for the sake of the new life where there are no social roles, relationships, obligations. Instead, there is the image of the garden and the embodiment of harmony between the female body and freedom. Female characters demonstrate the bodily rejection of subjugation based on the existential priority of liberty of freedom. Thank you very much. <laughs>